Hey guys, it's Teacher Dad. So it has been a little while since I've made a video and I decided I wanted to get back into this again. And so today I'm going to be showing you some of the apps that I use for teaching. I did a video some time back about how I use my Apple TV and my iPad Pro to do teaching in my classroom. And so today I have uh, four more apps that I found helpful in my teaching and I'm going to share them with you today and uh, give you a little overview. I could go more in depth with each of the apps but just going to give you a little bit of an introduction to each of them and if you were interested you can add them to your repertoire for teaching and you can ask me any questions if you want in the comments down below. So let's get started. So the first app that I'm going to show you is an app called iDoseo. Now, this particular app um, can be accessed using a PIN number, so you can have security in case a student were to find your uh, iPad lying about and you don't have an, a PIN number on the iPad. This prevents uh, unauthorized access from the grading program. So I have my various classes that are listed here and I'm going to create just a, um, a random class for our template for today. So you see once you get into the app you have various different options of how you're going to uh, display your grades. Uh, you can have just a blank grade book, you can do a weighted categories uh, and various other options. Again this is just going to be a fairly overview of the program so I'm just going to uh, put in a random category here for weighted grades. And this does also pull in some sample data. So these names are fictional. Uh, the app just randomly pulls in some of this information and allows you to, uh, to play around a little bit here. So you'll see once you get started, you can have your various columns and these will be um, each grade that you enter would enter into its own category. So for example, let's say here we had a test. You can assign the number of points for that category and then once you leave then you'll see that uh, the points can be added here. There's various input methods of the ways that you can accumulate these and this is a fairly extensive program. You can do things like uh, seating charts, you can uh, implement, you can also do access to uh, your attendance records and so on. Now the only problem with this app, I say problem, uh, if you don't have an iOS device, is that this app only works um, on the Apple platform. And uh, there's no, uh, no PC-based app or uh, web-based or even uh, based for a Mac. Uh, and so this is your limitation of this program, but it is quite powerful. It has a lot of various tools. You can do different filters. You can do various reports and so on. If you're interested in seeing some more information about this particular app uh, and you'd like me to go into more in-depth app uh, testing or, or illustration upon this particular app here, uh, this app does cost around $12.99, so it is not a free app, but as I said, it is very extensive. So again, just giving you a little bit of a demo here on how this works and the overall things that you can do with it. So um, this is one of the apps that I have used for a number of years here in my classrooms. Now, another app that goes along with this, this can be used in conjunction with the iDoseo app, or it can also be used completely independent of the app. This app is called iDoseo Grade Scanner. Now this app uh, retails for I think $5.99 and this app I have used extensively when it comes to doing objective type tests or quizzes and so what you can do is you have a list again of your various classes I'm going to add another just uh, generic classroom here um, for our testing categories you would have to add the number of students um, you can import them from a list if you're already using iDoseo. You could import them from other means if you're using a Google Classroom. You're, there's various different ways that you can import uh, students into here. So then you would need to assign this student number. So each student can have their own, each student needs to have their own number. You can have this assigned if your school already has student ID numbers or you can generate your own simply for this class. Now, uh, as you, after you have 
this class established and you have all the student names entered into this class, then you can begin adding assessments. So an assessment, uh, we're going to call this a test number one. You can assign the number of questions that your test is going to have, anything from, uh, I think all the way down to just a handful of questions, all the way up to 100 questions. So we're just going to go with 50 here. You can assign the penalty for each category. So if you have a half a point per error that they make uh, or so on, you have various different ways of assessing that. Um, you can show how their percentage score will appear. And then you would go into this category here, which lists all of the questions. Now, the questions that you have, you have a default number of five possible answers, but you're not limited just to A, B, C, D, or E, because when you go to assign the correct answers for each of the questions, you can say that the answer is A and B, or is A and C, A and D, A and E, B, C, an example, all right? So you have quite a variety of possible answers if you wanted to go into uh, double letters or even triple letters or quadruple letters. So uh, if you had a much more extensive list of answers going beyond just five, you can assign that they need to put in multiple answers for a specific question. So you can go A through E, and then your next option could be A, B, A, C, A, D, A, E, and so on. And you could add uh, quite a list of variety of numbers there as possible answers if you wanted to go into a, much, a more extensive matching type situation. So what you would do is you go down through each of the questions. You would make sure that the multiple choice questions us, uh, are properly assigned to each of the questions. So depending on how many possible answers you have for each of those questions. And then you can go in and uh, look at the specifics for each question. You would assign which uh, is the correct answer for each of the questions. So this does take a little bit more time uh, beginning or before the test because you do have to create your questions that you're going to assign to the students. You have to put it into a multiple choice or a matching type situation. Then you have to go into your iDoseo grade scanner and you have to enter uh, all the information in here, the number of questions, and then go through and fill out the correct answers as your, uh, as your key that you're going to use. Once you have finished all of that, I'm going to uh, take this number of questions way down so that I can give you a sample of what this would look like without uh, going in too depth. So here you have uh, all the way down to a sample of five questions. So we're just going to say that these are the correct answers for each of these questions. We would go in, now you can see that the configuration, all the answers a key has been configured. So you can go into the test and you can print the sheets that your students are going to need to fill out. Now, one thing nice about these tests is that they don't have to be done in pencil. The marking instructions indicate to have them done in pencil. The only thing that would, um, it doesn't limit the ability for the grade scanner to pick them up, but the only thing that it would essentially have a problem with is if the students made a mistake and they needed to correct the mistake, then it is better for them to use a pencil. So. Um, it does give some indications about how to mark the quiz. Make sure that if the circle is completely filled in, not check marks, just a little dot or X's. So for example, uh, you would read the question from the question sheet, which I don't have just for the purposes of our uh, study here. So here, as we showed before, this would be an incorrect response. This would be a correct response. We chose all the answers, just A, B, C, D, or E. So we'll do all of these and then another incorrect answer here. You'll go in to scan their grades. Now it says uh, when scanning, it needs to be in a portrait mode. So you need to rotate the device. So then you can see what you would do here is line this up. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfectly lined up, but you would line this up so that the, the black dots 
are lined up with the uh, yellow dotted lines, you'll tap the screen and then IDASAO automatically assigns a grade for that student. Program here, now you can go into review your grades. So this has some nice features as well. You can see here that here are questions one through five. You can see that uh, you can look quickly at the total student assessments uh, and you can see that out of all of the available students, there was only one student in this case, but you could see how many students got a particular question incorrect. So you can see, uh, and then this will scroll down through a list if you have multiple questions here. It will show you the class average um, and various other medians and, and ma minimum maximum score here as well. But down here is where you can look at that particular student's test. So when you click on this, it will show you their total score. It will show you their uh, right and wrong answers. So this will be listed in column format here. You can see that the student got questions one, three, and four correct, that they got questions two and five incorrect. So the other thing is, if you click on the test, you'll see what happens here. Now you can go in and let's say, for example, that when the grade was scanned, the iPad or the program incorrectly assigned sometimes if, uh, if the grading uh, scanner is, isn't straight or something, it can sometimes mistakenly uh, give an incorrect answer, but it allows you to quickly look down through. And let's say, for example, that this grade scanner incorrectly um, realized a grade, you can manually adjust the grades, or in this case, let's say you decided that everyone in the class got question number five wrong, you decided that it wasn't a valid question, it wasn't covered properly or so on, and you decided you're going to throw it out. You could go into that question, you can manually uh, adjust that student's grade so that uh, everyone gets that grade correct. Once you have all of your students' grades, then you can go back out here, you can export these grades you can put them into an iDoseo column. So for example, if you were going to do that, then it will, if you're using the iDoseo grade program, you can go back out to your iDoseo grade scanning program. And you can now import that column from the grade scanner and uh, it would automatically assign to that student their particular grade. So in this case, these were just random names, uh, so it didn't have a name to match up for that student ID number, but it would automatically assign all of their grades into that column if you were using the two grade programs in conjunction with each other. So that is the basic overview of the iDoseo grade scanner. There are a few other things that you can do with it. So again, if you have any further interest in seeing a more in-depth video about the iDoseo grade scanner, you can let me know down in the comments. And if you have any questions about that, you can let me know as well. Now, third program that I'm going to talk about today, this program does have various applications uh, in other grades, but it does specifically work well in science. I work, uh, I'm a science teacher. And so here we have uh, an app called PHET. Now I do believe that this app is also available in multiple platforms and not just um, the iOS uh, platform here, but you can see that there are various different um, models and simulations that you can uh, that you can do inside of this app and this would allow you to perform internal or, or electronic simulations of the various different types of things that you might teach in science so uh, for example i'll just show you uh, one of these here um, this particular simulation um, is a way of generating uh, a type of a wave um, a wave box so it would allow you to see how the various waves interact with different uh, objects or different things in uh, a particular environment. You can see the paths of motion. All right, um, here's a water wave generator. So you can show um, how the effects of the waves would pass through a particular point. Um, but here is a uh, projectile motion. So this particular um, app allows you to uh, potentially um, 
indicate uh, if we had something traveling at 15 meters per second, um, you can find the path of that particular projectile. Here's another simulation that shows the various different states of matter and how those states change. So you can see the molecules as they would exist at a particular temperature. Um, you can adjust that whether it's Celsius or Calvin. If you want to make the uh, make it colder, if you want to make it warmer, here's a, an, an atom builder. So you can use this for building an atom. So you have protons, neutrons, and electrons. You can show um, how many would exist. It shows you um, where those electrons would potentially go. So here you have a neutral atom. Um, here you have an ion. So uh, the last app that I was going to mention um, is this app here, which is called uh, the Smart Notebook, S-M-A-R-T. And this app um, also, the, some of the functionality of this app is no longer available, but there is still uh, quite a number of different templates that are available that can be imported into this program. You can build your own content. Um, so basically here is a tutorial. It gives you the basic um, elements and ways that you can interact with this app. But basically what happens here is you can uh, project this screen of what you're seeing here onto your projector so that whatever you're showing on the screen, the students can see. Now, what happens then is you have the ability to control multiple aspects or elements. So you can see that these arrows, these text tools and so on, these are locked, but it allows you to move the, the, the uh, elements on the screen. So you can uh, do different drawing tools. You'll notice here what can happen as well. So if you have this triangle, um, it gives you the ability to rotate this. And again, this would be live as far as what the students are seeing. Um, again, here you have a line. Once you select the line, um, it gives you the ability to resize um, or move the line. Uh, you can also add text. Um, here is another, uh, you have the ability to press and hold, and it will give you the ability to copy and paste, um, or you can do this what's called infinite cloner. Um, you can make multiple copies of an image. Uh, you also have the ability to do different layer, the different layers. So you can press and hold. Um, you can bring this to the front. So now the B is behind the flower. So it does have the ability to work with different layers uh, live on screen as well. So there's additional tutorials and training. Um, smarttech.com slash training. So here is uh, this uh, main page where it's called um, exchange.smarttech.com and this is where you'll find a lot of these uh, smart notebook files that are saved and people have made these and made them available for you to download and use for your own purposes. All right, here's another one um, that these can be mixed up. So basically what happens is this can be used for uh, quizzing and evaluation. It can be used for reinforcement of different material. So in this case, you're talking about the elements as they would exist either as metals or non-metals. And so you can have the students um, attempt to put all of these into the correct arrangement as to whether they are uh, metals or non-metals. And then the students who are watching or observing, they can see whether or not anybody has them correct or incorrect, or you can pass them around, put all the elements in the middle here, and each person tries to assign them to their correct order. So uh, those are the various uh, tips and tools that I was going to show you for today for different apps that might be helpful to you as a teacher or in your classroom. So you can see the uh, link down in the description. And uh, if you want to be, if you look for any of those and would like the, the, some more information, again, if you have any questions or would like more information about any of these specific apps and would like to would like me to do more in depth, look at those, let me know, make sure you uh, let me know if you have any questions. Also, um, please, if you would uh, subscribe to my channel. So again, if you have any questions um, and would like to see more content along this line, make sure you click that subscribe button and we'll see you again on the next one.